Hey folks, up here and welcome on back to my hardcore Minecraft world where today is finally a world tour. We've hit episode 60 and as of officially right now, 6,413 days survived in this same world without dying. So we have a ton of stuff to look at. So uh, buckle up, get some popcorn, get a nice beverage as uh, this is probably going to be a very, very long tour. Everything started right here with my starter base. Well, actually, we spawned in at the far side of that mountain, but we'll get down there in a moment. But this is the house that I built first. And honestly, I still live out of it with a lot of my storage still in here for a bunch of various things I haven't built storage rooms for. But we've got a nice little kitchen over here. All of this is full of like random goods. I have so many ores that I need to break down inside of these. And we've just got a bunch of random stuff throughout here i still have my original starter bed placed down right here ready to go in the bedroom on the second floor i've got a little balcony here that i can use to fly out so i can avoid any mobs that might have spawned that are hanging out down there and then this connects into that tower via this little overpass and i have my original enchanting setup right up here and randomly two sets of netherite armor and a bunch of gold what was i doing with those i have so much gold up here there's books and la oh, what I what was anybody know what I was doing with those because I don't know uh we do have a small little attic space that has leftover bulk storage in here randomly a jukebox and stuff that we got from raiding our ancient cities for the first time because I just never knew where to put it so it's been up there and I've never really used it since I've even filled in underneath the staircase with a bunch of storage. We got all of our sherds over here. We have so many wither skelly skulls. And the first way I started to expand was this way. So we've got a little bit of a blacksmith over here with where I do all of my netherite armor upgrades and forging and crafting all that stuff. So we got a bunch of stuff in there. There's a little house up above, a bunch of books for enchanting things so I could get extra sets of tools. And here we have the animal barn where originally I had sheep over in here, I had pigs over in here, and then I uh, realized it's all dirt on the inside, so sheep can't really get their wool back. Out of the back, we've got all of our cows and apparently a sheep who are hanging out in a little pen right here and have been there for probably 6,300 days at this point. Over here, I've got a small stables where I've kept my first donkey and mule in there, and I believe my horse is not in there. My horse is somewhere else. Probably doing amazing things, but we've got some puppos right here. We've got the burb tree. Every single time I find a parrot that I don't know where to put it, I bring it back and set it up here on the burb tree, which I just love the idea. There's probably like 15, 20 parrots on here, and it's just so very cool. Uh, I want to keep adding more, but it is starting to lag it out a little bit, but I love all the birds chirping and everything as you walk by, so that's pretty cool. we got a small chicken coop right there to get some eggs whenever we might need them. And of course, the expansion of our fields right up there is a house that I built for my first two doggos that we have. So we have Sky and Geo. Oh, yeah. Giant tree. We'll talk about that soon. Also, just as a quick note, if you are a supporter over on my main channel, the main Flip channel, not here on Flip 2, I don't believe it's set up, but you can get access to a world download for tier one members, Patreon supporters or Twitch subs tier one and up can all get a world download so you can explore this yourself. But right over here, we've got even more fields, and this is actually my original moss farm. I don't really use it too much anymore, as I have a better source of moss and bone meal if I need it, but we've got the farm right around back in there, and uh, most of it is actually right above our head right now. Then that leads down here to where we did some initial villager setups with getting an automatic potato field right there, automatic potato farm. So this guy picks them all up, and there's another villager in there, and you can see the minecart hopper right in there so anytime he tries to throw the potatoes over to that dude the hopper just picks him up and then we've got one right in here for carrots but this villager oh no he's alive that's nice he's died so many times I've had to replace him like six or seven times and that's that's okay that's that's fine he's alive again so that's good right back in here we've just got an extra storage building that I was planning to build out and right now it just has a mine track that goes all the way back to my villager breeder and trading hall which we'll get to in a little while and so we didn't really finish those off, but we'll get to them eventually. Got some more custom trees. We got a little bit of a vineyard patch right here. Of course, more fields. This building is a bee farm. I wanted to build a giant greenhouse with a bee farm attached to it. So back here, we have our honeycomb farm right in there, which is out right now because that filled up very quickly and I just haven't needed it. Then we've got just the cool little greenhouse section in there. And then if I do need to do any bee breeding, I've got this little setup right here, which uh, is a little full of bees. So yeah, that's fine. I guess if I ever need bees, I have them ready to go right there. 
Continuing down into the valley, we're definitely not doing this in order of episodes at all, just kind of naturally where the pathway takes us. We will loop back up and check out a bunch of stuff on that side as it's very, very cool. But here we have my sheep farm. We've got a bunch of sheep on the outside here, and then I breed them up if I ever need a lot of a bulk color. But I actually built another sheep farm recently, so I don't really need to do that. But in here, I've got one of every single colored sheep and an automatic farm hooked up. So if I ever do need any wool, I can come down here and get any of uh, any of the colors that I might need. Continuing further, if we take a right on this pathway over here, it leads us beyond a bunch of other fields that we have down into my fishing dock, where I just kind of randomly built a big old fish. We got this little fishing dock set up, and I believe somewhere in here I have a really strong fishing rod. I think I did. I might have taken it out of here. But my plan was to come here and just catch fish whenever I needed anything or just wanted to kill some time. Uh, we've got a bunch of turtles over there beyond the squids. Uh, we can ignore those for now added this little house recently and we'll get up to all of that cool there's a whole city back there some windmills on the hill and all that stuff up at the top there we'll check it out in a moment once we work our way back up but that is a lumber mill where I actually have one of my main storage rooms which is all of the wood storage that we need inside the game it's all stored in that building a big rule I have in this world is I want to continue to explore and walk around everything. So up there is my lumber storage. We've got stone storage and all of them scattered throughout the entire city region. So it gives me reasons to explore around everything I've built instead of just being like, cool, built it. Now I'm going back to my mega storage room and I'll never look at this stuff again. But down here we have just a little fun place of a bunch of houses with a small like village of sorts just to fill this space because I didn't want to put yet another field. I mean, we can never have too many fields, but I felt like maybe we should have something other than a field right down in here and then up here when cherry trees came out we added this little bit in here of a small cherry tree orchard I know it's not realistic but it's Minecraft so it's fine back up this way right above our lake for the fishing we've got another little section of houses here with a little grain silo that all kind of connects in and just a bunch of cool stuff custom trees little work yard and all that cool stuff back here yeah there's a there's a lot to look at if you're new here hi hello I love to build things and we make a lot of stuff inside this world like this town originally started on episode 10 way, way, way long ago. I built a lot of it and then I recently came back and actually finished all of it. So we've got a wagon storage, just a random house right there. We've got this is part of a stables connected to an inn section over there, a big old market here in the middle and a lot of just cool decorative stuff around here to really enhance the feeling of this valley when you're looking back at the Giga Tree. A little painter over here selling their works that they've made and just random other stuff now the main purpose of this town is i have every single type of cat here so if i ever need to breed them and i want a specific one they're all sitting here so i could just breed them as i want but we have this really cool dock down here with a bunch of tiny boats that are actually built by people in my supporter community way back in the day i asked people to build little boats and i added them here into the world one of my moderators blocky made that one out there which is so very cool i believe another one of my mods thomas made that little like steamboat type one here and i unfortunately can't remember the names of the people who made the other ones but it's really cool being able to have those in here we've got a little storage room that i was using when i was actually working to build up this place we got that in here a lot of this space we're sp standing on is all terraformed and everything and you can see the rest of the little houses over here fields stretching as far as the eye can see back towards world spawn which is actually right at the edge of that roof right there that is world spawn which we'll go into in a moment and kind of loop our way back around everything the new expansion i made to the town if we go past all of the cats is this section over here where we added in this little fish cleaning area we've got a new build here we've got a larger dock section with a much larger boat over here delivering a fossil from our desert region of new papyrus showed that that was excavated out here and they traded it with the region to bring back into the city so that's being dropped off here but another massive storage room big old tower and all that stuff and just a few more houses along the back street here to bring it all home little flight into the sky you can see the valley that we've been walking through right over here and I really really love how this has all turned out I think it's been so absolutely special to be able to build everything and before we get too far away from everything let's go to world spawn check out these things and we'll jump back up there I guess we can start along the road here of this is the output of a fully automatic wheat farm so we have a really really massive system just producing wheat endlessly because I wanted one hay bales and two I wanted a lot of packed mud and I really didn't want to have to keep harvesting my fields because they're kind of meant to be decorative so that's how we figured it out that actually the farm for it if we come up here into the mountain 
is hidden right here. So it's an LA powered. Oh, geez. All right. Yep. Let's not die in this world tour. It's an LA powered. Oh, my gosh. What happened to all the bees? They've been duplicating. OK, right. Uh, yeah. So I have bees back there that are supposed to pollinate all of this. Then they go back into their hive and then the villager harvests it but it, their inventory is full of wheat seeds so they can't actually pick up the wheat so they pick up more seeds and then they're forever stuck in that so our little la here he will go around and pick up all the wheat on the ground and when that note block chime happens that you just heard he drops it off here that all goes into these which used to be the full storage then i just hooked it into a water stream that takes us all the way back out here to the storage building I absolutely love having that setup. It was really fun to design. One of the first redstone projects that I fully made myself, which was really cool to do. Ooh. Let's stop falling in things. Let's let's really try to stop falling in things. That'd be absolutely great. That's that's Harry down there. He's he's been in this little place for a long, long time. He hangs out there though. But here at World Spawn, we've got ourselves an iron farm. Of course, like every single person with a long-term world, you always have an iron farm at spawn, so that it is constantly producing. And it's, uh, it's been around for over 6,000 days. So it's a uh, very full, probably completely overflowing if we could actually reach that. We've got a little bone meal output there. We've got all of the poppies coming in here. And it's a very simple design because I, yeah. Yeah, it's a little full. It's a little full. <laughs> well, we'll just leave all that in there. Right. Now we're down here in World Spawn, where World Spawn actually is this. These four torches right there. The first crafting table I ever made is placed right over there. And this is the place where it all started. I spawned into the game somewhere right about here. And I have terraformed the region out a little bit. So you can't recognize it too much. But I have made sure to keep those little torches in to mark the chunks that we spawned in. And then this right here is a little moss farm that I've hooked up as my new one. So if I ever need bulk moss, I can turn that on. And because we're in world spawn, it keeps running. I originally also thought a cactus farm would work if you're putting in it at world spawn. So I built one of those back here. Unfortunately, the player has to be nearby for that to work. So uh, it never runs, but I turned it into a cool like in building of sorts. Did a very simplified version of my logo right here on the ground, which I think is kind of fun and just extra little house. And then my favorite recent edition, fairly recent edition, basically when the update came out for 1.20, right? When we got access to sniffers, I built this big old sniffer farm here. I added in a giant pitcher pod field so that I can keep harvesting them and using them as flowers. And then I added in the torch flower field right over here as well, which I really like. But as you can see, we have a ton of sniffers hanging out there in the field. And there's a minecart track that actually runs underneath everything. So anytime that they drop something like that little pitcher pod right over there, there's a minecart that runs constantly and he's kind of stalling out. We'll just leave him there. But that all drops everything back over to here through an item elevator system. And as you can see, it's uh, it's been running for quite a while. And I've actually filled up every single one of these pretty much too with the items also. So we have a lot. We have a lot that we can grow and produce if we ever want them. And I didn't really realize until after I made it that it kind of looks like a McDonald's. But that's okay. I, I'm fine with it. <laughs> I really like how this build turned out. I really like how World Spawn's shaping up. I added just to randomly fill in this place with something different. We added in a little market stand where they're selling trees, saplings, and little flowers, just kind of colorful stuff. Then that road leads out over here to where we have a farmhouse. We've got a gatehouse with a bridge to get ourselves across the river that the big boats can use to get into that town we were just touring around. It's just a little farming hamlet down here. I don't think I filled in too much of the detail on the inside. I kind of started plotting out walls and then did a basement for it. So we got that down here, which is looking pretty good. And we'll come back eventually and actually flesh out more of the interiors of this space because I do want to continue doing that. So yeah, you can see I kind of started it. I just haven't really come in and actually done the details, but the base framework is in. And they got a small little work yard here around the back. And we are starting to slowly expand more and more fields with another pitcher pod one we've got these and a little road leading out over to there to where i've got a stony shore biome that i would love to do something with i just don't know quite what i want to do with it yet continuing beyond world spawn though right over here i have a mushroom farm why because i wanted to get a bunch of mushroom blocks to build with so i decided of course to bring over some brown mushrooms well obtain some brown mushrooms which comes from uh getting red mushrooms Mushroom, not mushroom. Those are those are mushrooms. They're they're alive. Uh, you get red mushrooms and then you strike them with lightning and then they turn into brown mushrooms. So that was a really fun challenge to do and get those. So we got these guys up here. They got their little pen down there 
And then we have the mushroom factory right over here. Which has a small storage room for everything. If you follow this down, you can get to the storage. And then we actually have full systems up here with a different field for our brown mushrooms. So we can plant them there, come over and flip the lever, and they'll all grow up as once. And then we have the red over here. And you see part of it's harvested because I needed some recently. But the cool part about it is anything falls in this river at any point, this creek will push it all the way down here and they will go inside the hoppers. So instead of needing to go into the storage room, and put it on there, I could just throw everything here in the water and then they get they end up in the storage on the inside, which is very cool. To go along with everything mushroom themed, I made a little pig pen over here, a little pig sty. So we have some pigs in case you like for truffles or something like that. Thought would be very, very cool. And I uh, just kind of kept them in over here. If you follow this road going along this way, there's two things to see out here. First, we have the mud brick castle. When mud bricks were added into the game, I wanted to do something using them to build up something really cool. So we built this smallish castle, which I love so very much. It's one of my favorite builds inside this world. And I would love to come back here and do some more with it because, uh, well, it's a little hollow, but that's okay because it looks really dang cool. It was meant to be a backdrop in this world originally, and I really love it. And it also has this cool system here. This waterway actually leads out to a massive ocean that connects into so many other places, reaching five plus thousand blocks in different directions, which is really cool. So we kind of are building civilizations based around the ocean. So I added this little gate here so they can defend against ships coming in. They can raise it and lower it as they want to. But yeah, this guy turned out really, really cool using our mud, using our calcite, our deep slate and all that stuff. And I just love it. It's a really, really fun one to look at and just kind of have in the background of a silhouette here in the world of this really cool, like brownstone castle of sorts with our brick and our mud and all that stuff. If we go back over here towards the mushroom factory, we can continue along this road, which currently branches off in two directions. One going out that way because I accidentally got lost while I was building the road and went the wrong direction. So that's a future flip build site out there. But Otherwise, you can follow this one here to where I built this cool little fishing village with, of course, goats. I think goats are such a cool mob, but they're such a pain to keep in places to actually, you know, have them stick around. So unfortunately, all these guys are leaded here to fences, so they try and jump away, but then they just get tethered back to their bush and they have to come back here. So I do feel kind of bad about it, but it means they get to hang out in the nice pasture I made for them. Now inside of here, we've got a few fields. We got a little chicken coop right there. And then we have some villagers who are hanging out that you might see. We've got some wandering trader llamas. And this is a build project that I was just kind of in a slump in this world. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I was like, you know what? We're just going to fly out here. We're just going to get to work and see what comes from it. So this entire train that we're standing on, I actually wanted to raise it up. So the original train is about down here and that continues across the entire space. So we've got this really cool cliff going all the way over here. And since they're connected to the ocean, I figured the harbor would be kind of rough to build. So I wanted to go off this theory of we have these really cool tide flats where the tide is just washing up against these cliffs. You can see them hollowed out and weathered over many, many years. And then the fishermen in this village built this little bulwark here out of their stones that they piled up with a little bit of dirt on top and everything as a safe place to bring their boats down this cliff using some sort of mechanism that I wasn't able to design because it's a diagonal and it was kind of difficult to do. And then we can put the boats in there, safely get all set up and then go out fishing and all that stuff, which led into needing to carve this all out. This used to be a beach biome, so that sand extended almost across the entire thing. And I needed to hollow it all out through here, including this entire canyon, there was a very thin, like one, two block wide river that went through here. And I cleared all of that out as a way to make that castle make sense with its little own archway and everything. So that was a massive project to dig everything else out. But it was just kind of one of those. I was like, Ooh, what if I did this? Oh, maybe I'll do this next. Okay. We're going to go over here and do this after that. And then bam, 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 bam. And it was really fun. So I'm really happy I decided to take on this project and uh, I thought somebody destroyed my door. Now, every single one of these houses just has a bed and a workstation in it. So the villagers want to keep doing stuff and hanging out in here uh, because I did kind of steal them from their village. So sorry, guys, I built you a really cool village here, though. So that's that's fun. But that's more or less the extent that I've went off in that direction in this world so far. So we can return ourselves back to world spawn 
and you can see the giant world tree over there that is something that i just wanted to build a giant tree it's as simple as that if you've played the game god of war ragnarok i got very inspired by the world tree that you see inside of the place where you're transferring be between the different realms i thought it was so cool the diet the like diagram they had in there so i wanted to build this big old thing make it shattered in the middle like that tree was and then just kind of kept building across that and thought it was so fun. We went through a few iterations of adding leaves on top and uh, we're close to 70,000 azalea leaves on this thing. And uh, I've put more than I think 60, 70 hours worth of work into it. And we can also go up here because during that project I, or near that project, I decided to start running around and getting advancements just as something else to do in the game. So for getting the star trader advancement, you need to put a villager at world height. So I had this guy previously just on a dirt platform all the way up there, and we decided to give him a give him a little bit of a home here instead of just living all the way up there. So now he has a cool airship, and he's got this cool lore behind him if he's our star trader boy. And our world looks really small from up here, but we've basically toured through all of that so far, all the way out there in the distance. And uh, we can do this and start the city and go through all that. Then we'll loop around villager trading hall and then we'll go off in that direction and check out some more really cool things. You know what, we'll start at the end of this road so we can continue walking straight. We don't have to backtrack that much. But all the way out here, if you've seen episode 58 where we just completed episode 60, no, 59. Yes, 59 here. Uh, I started a new custom terraforming project and it's gotten massive. It's really, really cool. I'm so excited to continue this and we're slowly working towards it. So that's all the way out here. Uh, this alone took about 50 hours to make uh, because this whole thing was a forest like that and I cleared everything out and it's all completely built up on top of itself, all floating, gathered materials and all that cool stuff. And I'm really hoping to continue expanding it, but you can kind of see the underside there as we're going backwards. The goal is to cover multiple biomes back here and just create my own custom environment, my own custom world inside this Minecraft place. That is where I got all of the azalea leaves for the tree. I still just need to clean up the rest of it because I couldn't be bothered after I finished the tree. I needed a little bit of a break. This mountain here started from a 24 hour building challenge of how much can I make in this world in 24 hours? And that's where this whole thing came from. That is the gas farm output for the storage for that, which is really cool. My original raid farm is here in the middle of this Stonehenge inspired build. We got a cool little farmhouse down here, which is decorated on the outside. And it's got a little bit of a story behind it. But yeah, the inside is just my full frog light interior cool custom oak tree out in front and this road eventually is going to connect to that custom terrain back there very excited for it going to kind of weave it along here but this mountain range i want to do something really special up here i started this terrain right there and i'm trying to use the idea that you see in a lot of rpg games as you end one region and start another you have say massive forest and then you have big old backdrop and you can't really see what's on the other side and that allows you to put something totally different build style right on the other side. So this build style here doesn't match at all with the build style we have over here. Very different. And you can't tell that it's even there or that this is here because you have the giant mountain in the way. So that's kind of where it started. The whole front of this is finished and textured and all that. Recently we expanded and actually built the back of it too. Uh, but where I'm getting off track of where I wanted to go. So we'll come back and touch on this some more. But yeah, it's fully finished all the way down to the ground. And it's really, really cool looking. And I love it so very much. And uh, we'll chat about that more soon. But since we're here, yeah, this whole monument thing kind of inspired by what you see in like the Halo games. And I can't remember where else I got the inspiration from. But there's a few different games and things that I absolutely loved. So I built this and you can come down on the inside because I had the output for my gas farm where I get all my gunpowder from it was right here and it just looked really ugly sitting here that i it's connecting to a creeper farm over there because i finally built one as another source of gunpowder but you see all of that kind of funnels into here gas tears in here like crazy and then this is all just bulk stuff but inside the mountain sensor here and we don't want to come back later uh yeah there's the little creeper farm it's just a few layers of one of those bow tie creeper farms. I can't remember who made it. Chap Mr. Chapman. I think Chapman's designed for that one. Uh, so I put that in there while we were working on the mountain so it would passively just make gunpowder for me. And yeah, 
I guess this is what the entire inside of the mountain looks like. And it's uh, there's a lot there's you can see all of it in here. And eventually this whole texturing thing will be on that side, too. And it's probably going to be fully spawning mobs again. It's going to be horrible, but it's going to look so good. So it'll be worth it. And a fun fact about it, that that highest point of the mountain, if you're on the outside, weirdly enough, didn't measure at all, but it worked out perfectly to where the creepers die all the way right down here to actually loot the gunpowder before it goes off. That is a perfect spawning sphere. So if I'm standing on top of the mountain, the only place that's spawnable is our creeper farm. Completely not intended. And honestly, I probably should have done the math before because if I built that one block lower, the farm wouldn't work. Uh, but it's really cool coincidence that it did work out. So that's fun. Oh yeah. Hi, hi, wandering trader. We'll get into the nether and look at all that stuff soon because I want to focus on what we have here in the overworld first before we start exploring, exploring those things like back over at the Stonehenge where the raid farm was. I built this as a raid farm originally because, well, that was a pillager outpost. This was a fully functional raid farm design and the villager is actually still down here. Sorry, buddy. I need to do something with you one day. He needs a he needs a nice home. But yeah, I had this pillager outpost up here that I was like, what if I transform it into a castle and just have some fun building something cool for our pillagers? So this is actually a spawning pillager outpost. As we get closer, you'll start seeing some pillagers popping in. I put this really cool forest around it. Very inspired from games like Kingdom Come Deliverance. Oh, the moss screw. No, I need to come back and fix it. Don't tell me. Oh, it's in the Ravager pen too. What's your name? Oh, Precious. Hi, Precious. No, you stay in there. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, I trapped him in there to go full pillager vibes. How did the grass grow? Oh, it probably came from underneath. Oh, that's a bummer. Okay. Well, in here, it looks really cool. Where are all the pillagers, though? That's what... I want to know. Uh, yeah, there are plenty of spaces for them to spawn, and they're usually all over the place here. <clears throat> it looks like a wandering trader's right out there, and uh, we do have a few pillagers right back here. I kept every element of a pillager outpost, just my own version of it. So we've got like our iron golems trapped in the cage there. They've got their own little archery range over here to practice so all for all of their upcoming pillaging activities. And as we come back down the pathway here, I think I got one. Yeah, I got I got a friend following me. We'll just lose them in the forest that I recently transformed. This was a just normal oak forest, regular Minecrafty forest. And I was like, you know what? What if we built a custom forest? Because that could be really cool. That one over there is a full custom birch forest. When the birch forest, unfortunately, did not get the update, I decided to make my own custom one. And then recently, I was like, I really love that project and how it looks in the world. So what if we come back through here and build our own custom oak forest to go along with it and really just kind of fully customize this spawn zone like that's my end goal is to have everything out here just fully custom made stuff that i've done myself like every block that i want to change eventually in this region will be changed and i think that's going to be so cool to be able to look back on and like compare the blank world seat of this world to what i have here i mean already it's a massive change massive massive change up there um but it's really really cool to be able to see it all together up here, we have two near identical windmills. Three, actually, because we have a third one right over there. All their base interior spaces are pretty much the same. And then I made unique ways to get up to the top and just kind of change those up. So you can see a cart that's hoisting things up to the top there. And I believe this one does not have a way to reach the top. What did I do? For I don't know. Maybe I didn't do one on that. But like this guy here has a little ladder on the outside so you can get up and see a really bare bones version of a mechanism to explain why the windmill is able to turn. So we just got a little something up here that is turning and then affecting the mill down below and everything. So there's there's all that. And then the third one here, I believe, just has a slight difference to it on the interior. Uh, yeah, we just have a ladder that you can follow all the way up to the top. I wanted to keep all three of them exact carbon copies on the outside to show that the same like architects from the city here have built those. And so you'll see a lot of similar build themes throughout the city because it's all been planned by a similar group that has certain standards and things. And it kind of helps have a full completed build theme inside of the massive world. As we approach the main city itself, you can see we've got a little inn out here. We've got stables for anybody who might want to stay here as a cheaper place instead of paying to get in the city. I've got creepers. I, I mean, I've got cats to block creepers at every single 
gate entrance and main entrance that I have right now because on the inside is spawn proofed, but I'd want to make sure none get in and blow anything up. So we've got cats there to protect and scare the creepers off as we walk into this city. This here is another inn for right when you walk inside. We've got first floor interiors built out in a good amount of these spaces now, if I have to say it so myself, I'm pretty proud of it. So we've got a nice little seating space in there. We've got this and it leads back into a kitchen there, which is pretty cool. We'll walk down the main street, check out all these builds and then loop around over on this side. It's the one that's not fully finished. Uh, we've got two villagers sitting here because I was originally trying to strike one with lightning and turn it into a witch. And then uh, we just got a random wagon there and uh, open space that's hiding, well, should be hiding a uh, pumpkin and melon farm. We'll check out in just a moment. Farther down, we've got this little stall right there that uh, I think is just holding on a bunch of junk. And over here, we've got a tailor shop where the first floor is built out. So we got the main lobby in here. This is like fancy high level clothes. So you can come back here for a consultation, a fitting and trying on all your stuff, a little changing room in there. And then the actual place for the tailor to work is kind of back in here. Or maybe that's another consultation area and everything like that. Pretty basic interiors. I'm trying to learn how to make better interiors, but uh, these are older ones. They're probably about a year and a half old. So I'm 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 on my journey to improve and get better. Uh, this here is a grocery store, which I absolutely love the inside of. I think this is so cool. Uh, we've just got a bunch of stuff. We got a few veggies planted in some dirt over here to grow and look all massive. We got blueberries with our coral. And then back in here, you can open this. And this takes you down to that pumpkin melon farm where we got two of them on the different sides. And uh, storage is back in here. And it's very, very full. <laughs> Filling up quickly. I'm trying to use pumpkins and melons as building blocks, which is pretty fun for those cool orange and green colors. We'll go that way in a moment. Eh, no, we can go this way now. We've got a cool little wagon workshop. We've got a back alley street that we still need to decorate out a little bit more. But a little wagon workshop in there. We've got this cool little backyard area right over here, which is fun. That is the back end of a stables that we'll loop around to. This is supposed to be a carpenter's workshop in the base floor. And I just need to actually you know, build the ceiling in it. And then up here, we've got a cool custom tree. I'm really trying to make sure greenery stays in this entire world. So it's a big element that I'm trying to force into the city. We've got a bakery in here, eventually a bakery actually inside there, but like outside you can see cake. So that's pretty cool. This leads further down into the city, but we can head back towards the main gate for now, where we have the upstairs of our carpenter's house. We've got a smithy in here that is, it has a little bit of a story around it of two siblings that are both blacksmiths. So we have one station, two sta stations that are kind of mimicking each other. And then we have some ores. We have all their coal that they need to like keep the furnace going and the forge going and all that stuff. And it's just kind of cool, a little small story with the build instead of just a blank build or a generic interior, I should say. Right over here, we've got a cool little shrine just built into the city walls. When I was working on the city originally, I had just gotten back from my honeymoon where we went to Italy and touring around Rome and a lot of the other really, really old world cities that we were able to walk around. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, so I saw a lot of these shrines and things. I kind of want to bring that into my own Minecraft build. That's a special way to do it. So we have pops of color and just some flowers and who knows what's actually being honored there but i thought it was a cool element they've got banners going across just for extra color and vibes little small gardens inside the city i think is very important we've got a market square out here if you see these tiny micro blocks i added the data pack that gives the wandering trader the ability to trade one of the main block and one emerald to get eight micro blocks of a type so we have a bunch of them scattered throughout for just extra details as kind of custom player heads inside here we have the stables where we have one of every single type of rideable mob in the game, except the camel, because I haven't brought one over since they were added to the game. But we've even got a skeleton horse back here. We've got a little uh, manure pile and a place for them to hang out if they need or as they want to. But people can come and drop their mounts off here as they come into the city, and then they can further explore on foot. We have a bunch of back alleyways and things like that that are really cool. And we're back at the main gate where we can continue. We went down the main street there. We can go to the left here and it leads you along another little farming patch. We've got a big old adventurer's guild in here, which I'm very much looking forward to doing the interior. It just uh, hasn't quite happened yet. So you've got that the back of the inn, the kitchen that we were touring around a few moments ago connects to right there. You've got this cool little sitting area for the inn patrons to be able to come out and just have like a lush little retreat inside the city off of the main street and uh, hopefully away from the hustle and bustle. But up here, we've got a library that has a connection point up to a little second floor study that I haven't done, but we have done the first floor 
which is going to be housing all of the common in question of the day books. As we fill out a book, I'm going to throw it up here on the wall and I'm about to fill out the first one. I think I might honestly just throw it in here now because, uh, oh, I don't have an ender chest. I need to go find one. Where did I put that? Uh, but anyways, down here we have a little reading nook that you can hang out in as you want to and just kind of read some books and pass the time throughout the day. And the upstairs is uh, that little section we were just looking at a moment ago. As we continue straight along here, that goes down into our main square area in front of the town hall. But this little side route just has some extra builds on here that are pretty cool. I just wanted to kind of finish off this corner with buildings to hide the rough face of the mountain. And we've got a cool little lookout of sorts right up here for somebody to who's kind of just living on the edge of the mountain and hanging out up here. They have that for them, just adding random little details throughout. This is kind of meant to be a chapel of sorts, something really, really old. As you step down into here, there's an entrance to a crypt that eventually I hope to turn that into an actual door and have a way inside to be able to go explore around there. We need to still fix up that face of the mountain and actually finish off the tree and be able to round that out there because it's just a big flat face that I had to carve into to make space for things. I'm trying to keep moving forward on this tour as uh, we're almost at the 40 minute mark already, but this building has a fully completed interior and I love it so much. The town hall has a bit of a story that it used to be a mansion or manor for some royal family that was then converted into a town hall. So we've got a really cool room in here with the contrast between the orange and like the cyan blues, which is just a meeting room now. Over on this side, they took some of the other downstairs room and have like a front office here if you need to chat with anybody at the town hall and then you have like extra little meeting rooms in here and we've got another one hidden right back in there just for extra places to fill out the smaller rooms that we have that one leads into the garden itself going up above and then back here we actually have a kitchen that they had kept in and still use for whoever's working here then kind of store food in the kitchen and use that and maybe get some food as they're going throughout their workday, but we can come up to the upstairs where we've got just this cool staircase that leads into that central area above our middle that has a just a little supply closet in there. A lot of fun decorations, really trying to go for that contrasty acacia and warped wood theme in here and the dark prismarine. And I think that's cyan terracotta and all that. Changing up the feel as soon as you walk into this room, we've got what I originally was going to bring in as my bedroom, but I don't think I've ever used those beds. And uh, I built a little tiny back office in here where uh, we've got an entrance, so I guess if I need it right now, but I uh, don't. Extra little storage and what was a closet right in there. The second floor has been kept mostly as living quarters, so we got a bunch of beds in here for what would have been the kids' room previously and then we have this room because when I was working on this video for this place was actually my 1000th video on YouTube and honestly I just didn't know what to put in here so uh we got a big old 1000 up there so that's that's pretty cool then we got a display room with some beacons some wither skulls we got nether armor diamond armor and gold armor kind of mirrored on the sides and I just think it's really cool to see that at the end of the hallway here but we can go out this back door which leads into the gardens that I mentioned nice little place to sit out here under a trellis and just kind of like, I don't know, I said this was like wine bottles or something, like a little wine rack so you could sit out here, sip the day away, and, and just enjoy being in the garden where we have some really, really cool fountains. We've got a smaller version of the world tree right over in here that's kind of being grown. So they're being very careful about monitoring, monitoring it and all that stuff. Up here, we've got just a bunch of trees and lush stuff and trying to break it all up with having this overhanging bit with our sandstone there just so it's not just green on green on green i was really trying to hide the stone back there that i kind of did a quick terraforming job to hide it but we're going to eventually be putting some stuff up on top of that because it's a really cool area for building but we can loop down here as you can see all of the shrubs and everything little trees throughout the place and another garden like pool pond in here that loops back down here we got some lumber storage and that connects into where we get back into the main first floor of this place Alrighty, this is a lot of talking. There's so much to get through. Let's continue down this street where we have like a twin building here. One was meant to be like a watchmaker and the other one is meant to be like a tinkerer of sorts. So that's pretty cool. Over here, we've got a school that does actually have a full interior to it. So we got a classroom in there. We got a place for students to put their books and their bags and everything. And then up top, we've, we've just got this extra little classroom and everything and like a senior lounge of sorts or more for the older students to hang out in. As we continue down this way, this is going to be a merchant guild building. Haven't done the interior, but it does connect across to this big old bell tower or just actually a tower. It was originally going to be a bell tower, but I got rid of the bell and just turned it into a tower. So it's just a tower tower. 
but I'm trying to add small little pockets and market stalls along everywhere. So this city just feels full of life as we're going, which is very, very fun. This is a post office where I added this small little place for a cart to pull in and drop the post off where it's dry and it won't get wet. Then it can go into there to be processed and everything. Across the street, we have another inn of sorts. See the beds marking it and all that stuff. I have a loose rule here where every inn that I build, if it's a major one, is going to be connected to a stables. And then they're just using the top for extra rooms and everything like that. So we got a little stables build that's kind of has the interior started in here for the base framing. And this way you can walk underneath, which will lead out to two different roads eventually. And a small playground right here for behind the school building with a custom tree and a swing attached to it that I thought was pretty fun. But if we go back up just a little bit, there's this side street that I love this space so much. We've got a barber shop right here, which I think is pretty cool. And then we come up into this cool little market square or not market square, just a little tucked away corner. I guess you could say this very decorated out and super colorful back there. We have an alchemist of sorts and you can see big potion vats on the top of the house, which are so very fun. So we just got those sticking out to really make it fully themed around being an apothecary of sorts. Right next to that, we've got an herbalist. So they have a garden just growing pretty much one of everything, one of every little thing that you might need to make some potions and all that stuff. So they kind of work together and then randomly there's a barbershop here because I didn't know what else to put. But this leads us back down up to where we have the baker right there. But this goes back down to connect it around into the main road. But just for a quick little shot of the garden here, we got wither roses, torch flowers, some mushrooms, pitcher pods, all that stuff. And we have a cherry blossom that's kind of winding its way around that. Some sort of viney pink flowering plant and all this glowing stuff all over it too, I think is pretty fun. Now for one of my favorite buildings in this entire world, a recent addition here is the colored storage room. I mentioned having different storage rooms for everything in my world as I go. And this one here is to store everything colorful when it comes to concretes, glass, dyes, banners, all that stuff. Wool storage is back in where that big sheep factory was and terracotta is stored somewhere else. You can see we got all of our dyes over here. We've got all of our candles and everything kind of scattered around these, these, these spots. And I love this in here. It's so, so fun. I love the colors on this build. I was inspired by, I think Junipy is the right name for that, for this really heavy contrast reds and blues in the build. I think it turned out really, really fun. So that was super fun to be able to make. Then down in the basement, I really tried playing with lighting to have some darker spots and then really draw your attention out to these other corners. So we have all of our concrete in here for every single type. We have a little place to get some water if you need to convert powder into concrete and just a very, very decorated interior. I really love the feel of it. Then on the far side, we have our glass storage, which is an auto store storage system. So I do have all of the hoppers primed with sorting me mechanisms and everything. Right now, it doesn't go anywhere, but I do have a feed pipe coming in right back there right back there that we'll connect into that eventually this hopper line probably via a water stream or something is going to be ending up all the way over here to uh the outside when eventually the auto crafter gets turned in here i want to turn this place into like a dwarven inspired district in the city to go off of the dwarven village that i have that we'll check out in a moment where all my villager trading is but i want to make a fully automatic glass factory with our auto crafter then that can produce any color I want. And then that's just going to auto store over here in this building, which I think could be really cool to link them together. Since this build is very out there on the colors and very different to everything else that we have in the city, I decided to attach a park to the back of it to build up a lot of greenery and kind of hide it a bit more. So you really get that bam, cool color feel from the front of it, but it's a little bit more hidden from these sides. So it doesn't stand out too much. And I think it was a really good idea. So we've got this little garden back here that eventually is going to link down that way, but we've got to fill in all of the space with more buildings. This is a massive project that has over a thousand days alone of this world have been dedicated just to working on this thing as we're going. So there's a lot to be exploring here. That's the upper city section that we've done. And now we can move down into the more industrial area where we can just jump off of the path for now over here. Do I have an armory with, you might have guessed it already, all of the armor trims. Every single one of them is stored inside of here. Underneath a diamond armor set, we've got all of the trims that they represent and any copies that I might have. We got silence back in there. 
We've got a few inside here as well with some types of interiors built out to kind of hide those. Uh, as you can see, I kind of followed through on my no second floor rule that I go with. So you can have a really immersive place to walk through as you're going, but then uh, you're just kind of only going to stay at the area where you might, as a player walking along the ground, see inside the windows and everything. So that kind of leads into this storage building here, which I did need a way to get out to here. To I have a few more of our armor trims being displayed here. So I obviously need to build the interior to be able to get up to those. Then we have the last two up there, which was another place on the inside that you can walk through. Coming down this way, we've got another building right here with a small garden in the back. And inside it has all of the double flower farms. So if I ever need any of those for dyes or whatever, we can come get them here. Over on this side, I've got a lava farm where this is going to be a forge eventually in there just because we can see it. So I want to decorate it. But inside this door, because you can't see it too well, we've got a full lava farm. If I ever need to come get lava, I think I have 64 cauldrons in here. So we have all of that accessible whenever I might need that stuff. And yes, I do have fire tick off in this world, so the lava doesn't actually burn the wood because I'm here to decorate and build and I want to be able to use those blocks next to each other. Coming out this way, if you've seen my Empires Season 2 series, I built a whole goblin village called Gobland, and I love the build style and the color palette from it. So I did this building here as a tavern for an ode back to Goblin, as it does hold a Driftstone farm. So I wanted to build that very inspired by the build palette that I used for the drip tavern back in Goblin. So we've got that. There is no upstairs interior to it quite yet, but we can loop around the back here into this little alleyway that has the drip tavern, which is very much inspired by the interior I did in that place because I loved it so much. And then back here, we actually do have a little pointed dripstone farm that is absolutely terrible. But uh, if I ever need it, it's there. Oh, it just ran. Never mind. It's great. Look at that. You're not actually supposed to be there, so I'll take you with me. That way, it'll take us to another square, which we'll get to eventually. But right out over here, what we walked by was the back exit of the city. Eventually, this is going to lead down to a little harbor that I want to expand along here to utilize this waterway on this side a little bit more. As you can see on the far side of this mountain stream coming down, we've got that built out. So I'm going to do a similar feel over here. We've got a bit of a guard barracks right there connected into the wall so they can kind of patrol and keep and manage all of that stuff and keep everybody safe in here. We've got another smaller inn of sorts. No stables attached to this one because we're in the older district of town, but we can head down this way here across that mountain stream where we have a really cool just decorated place with a water mill in the back. We've got some extra just market stalls and workshop areas, outdoor spaces and all of that stuff along here, which are so fun. A blacksmith shop resting right along the waterway that I still need to build out a little bit more. And then we've got right over here a fish and chip shop. So you can come buy your fishies, you can get your potatoes, and you can just snack on some food right here out at a market stall, a little vendor. Right over this side, we got a workshop for a outdoor carpenter of sorts where they're like working on a boat or something like that with three buildings, big old workshop building there, a little small studio back in there, and something that would be more of like a general store inside of that one. That loops down here to where I want to build a big crane here so you can hoist things up off of this lower dock more easily. So it's going to be something in there. This connects back into what actually is a functional farm with a very terrible interior that is marked by the mud out in front. So this is a old farm that I never really use as a way to convert dirt into mud. Even with an unenchanted diamond shovel, I can't get the rates right. And uh, moving down to an iron one at that point, I'm like, I should just go out and farm a giant mangrove swamp if I actually need that much mud, because uh, that's very slow to break it all. I guess it is kind of AFKable, but I really try to not AFK in this world. We've also got a little chicken coop right over here. We've got another outdoor forge area right over here. Just workstations galore throughout to show people actually living in here and working in the space instead of just living inside of the buildings and nothing on the outside. We've got another dock room storage area down here that by all these smokers is making a bunch of dried kelp. I think it is very backed up. Let's see if we can craft some of this down and uh, start them smelting again. All of them are smelting again, which is great. And I just need to come back and add more fuel later on. But they queue up so much in there that they're pretty much always overflowing. Up above that, we have another storage room of the city. This stores all of my dirts, grass, other types of dirts, clay, gravel, sands, mud, packed mud, mangrove roots, and all that stuff in here, which is really cool. So we have access to that if we need it in this space. And then up above, because I forgot it existed, uh, we have all of the red sand that I got from converting a mesa that we'll be checking out eventually. 
I hope you all were okay with like a two hour video touring this because I feel like it's going to be pretty close to that seeing as we're just uh, hitting 54 minutes on recording time right now who knows how much will be cut out but uh yeah it's taken a while to get around here we've already toured those but if you come back along this pathway you can get to that dirt storage room then up here we've got a small stable for some workhorses as we are leading up into a factory space random little monument here just to decorate that corner I wanted something so I added that in and I kind of like it you can't really see the conduit from far away unfortunately so that's a bit of a bummer but overall I like how it looks up here we have a brick factory which I think is so cool so we've got a bunch of these big brick kilns with all of the smoke coming out the top you can see bricks that are drying out here on the inside we've got some that are like I use copper raw copper as a unsmelted brick or brick in the process of being smelted we've got a bunch of fuel storage back here with our coal and our blackstone to kind of mark that We've got a pottery storage place here where they're making a bunch of these big old pots and kind of working on them all different various shapes and sizes. And then to make this place actually functional, we have a dirt. No, door, please. Thank you. We have a dirt to mud to clay converter right here so that we can get all of that set up if we ever want it. Uh, it's full right now, as you can see, so I can just ha harvest up this clay as I want and go drop it down in the storage room. But I don't use clay too much, so I just kind of leave it there unless I absolutely need it. It's a block that I want to use more of, but I just haven't really found great ways to do that yet. Back down here, though, on our main street in this cover to get... I have so many problems with grass growing over spaces. I swear I fixed us, but I guess not. Uh, yeah, we have this back little way to the mountain stream again where we got a bunch... We got a little garden space in there. We've got the backyard here. And we can move ourselves over to the far side where that workstation I was talking about, I think is pretty fun one. We've got the backside of the inn there. And uh, I added these walls in recently to stop vines from growing. And I think it turned out pretty cool. I like how it looks. But along this back route, that, this is kind of a, just another generic building. It doesn't really have a purpose yet. We've got another very, very old one right here that doesn't really have a whole purpose. But this water mill right here, because it was kind of a one-off one, I wanted to give it a reason to exist. So I turned it into a hanging roots as well as a glowberry farm right in there. So I can flick those and they just keep getting bone mealed. And that uh, rooted dirt block up there will get bone mealed, which creates those. And then I can stand here and just hold right click on that guy or hold left click with shears on that guy and get a bunch of those, which is very nice to have a bunch of them. And we can kind of come back down and connect into this section where if we move forward over here, you can see back to where our city gate is on the far side and then we have the barracks and all that this red building right here is very very fun because it's a bamboo bookstore so you can come inside you can get your drinks you can look at all of the books you can sit down and read and all that cool stuff and then down below as is the bamboo's name we have ourselves a bamboo farm that is producing so much bamboo and you can see it all down in there and i'm sure it is broken as per the usual so that just kind of hangs out down there and if i ever need to harvest it or get more bamboo i unfortunately do need to go fix it a bunch because it's a flying machine powered one and uh they tend to break themselves up here in our main square for this region we've got a big old second manor that's kind of the town hall for this lower section that is covering underneath it we i don't know if you can see it from over here i believe you can kind of kind of right there we've got a mangrove tree farm i try to not auto farm trees but i find mangrove trees as well as the nether trees so tedious to chop that i actively don't use them so to gird around that and make myself actually want to use them i put auto farms for those but as far as the other tree types like our our dark oak our oak and our acacias our spruce and all those I don't auto farm those because I am willing to go out and do it. And I really want my stats page to look absolutely insane instead of just AFK auto farm time. I, that's just not how I like playing the game. So we got that in there. We got space for a future expansion back here, kind of building into an archway that will connect into some things. We got like a mechanist shop right in here, Mary's Mechanics. And then uh, as a, to my friend Mythical Sausage, we got Mythland Meats right in there that we need to turn into a little butcher shop. And then my favorite place in this whole region is we have the foliage market where I am storing every single type of plant in the game. So we've got storage rooms for all of them, little separate barrels and everything. We've got our flowers right over here as we might need them just as a way to live in the world and keep exploring. I got all that over here. We got all of the leaves on that wall, saplings right over there, and it just looks so fun. 
we've got nether stuff right up in here that we might need as we're going and then right down here we got ferns and tall grass and dead bushes and the nether mushrooms and all those and whatnot and all that stuff is right back in here this building right here kind of connects into that one of I want to turn into a cookie shop on the first floor because the upstairs is a cocoa bean farm. So if I ever need brown dye, we can come in there and get a bunch of it. And this leads to another city exit point right there, which we'll get to in a moment. We got wagon storage right here just for a lot of the functional factory elements in the space as this guy right here is a giant copper factory. So the idea is that you can come in here past the security guard and all of the raw copper gets delivered into this building where it is unloaded put on this conveyor belt moved over to here and loaded onto a smaller wagon that's going to take it farther into this place so it's kind of processed from the ores into blocks of raw copper as that could then be put back here where it's stockpiled and ready to go to be thrown into these giant furnaces that are going to be smelting all of our copper down I've added a few little machinery elements to this world, so you'll see a few of them around because I want to say that the people living in the city are welcoming of all technologies and the magical races. This is very much like a medieval fantasy world. So like I mentioned, dwarves in the past, all of those races you can think of definitely exist in here. And I'm kind of going of they all exist in harmony. So maybe they got some cool dwarven technology to help power the factories for the city. So we got these big old technical sil silos in here. And then after that copper is smelted down and everything turned into that, it is then transported over to here where it is loaded as cut copper onto the different carts to be sent out into the city to whoever purchased it, they can get all of their copper. Now as the functional element for that, we can come through here, come down this way and go down a few flights of stairs that will lead us to here where I can age down four stacks of copper and get all of our final stage. So if I ever need a lot of this, I can come down here and just harvest all of it and then replace it with our regular copper blocks as we're moving. And that just kind of helps me keep building and keep working on things as it's uh, kind of a pain to wait for copper to age sometimes. So uh, we got a whole room dedicated to it. Now, if we go forward outside this back city gate, this very, very small one that leads into a quarry that was built as a late addition because they needed a lot of stones to build the city. Obviously, it's very much built out of stone and brick and all that stuff. So they had to dig out this massive quarry. And well, they wanted a quicker way than going all the way around again to the city. So they kind of cut out this channel here. Well, I exploded with TNT and built that out there myself. We've got the main original exit from the quarry going up there, but because it's a smaller pathway, that's not really a great place that you can attack. So they don't need a massive defense defendable position there. And if anybody were to be coming up that little pathway, they're kind of sitting ducks as there's not too many places to hide. But the cool part about the quarry, not only that we had to dig the entire thing out and get a bunch of stone in the process, but it holds yet another storage room for us. Right inside of this building, we've got our stone storage room. So we got stone and stone brick. We got all of our cobblestones. We got all of our deep slates. We got all of our nether bricks and things right back in here. Look at all that netherrack. Look at all of that obsidian we have. And uh, that just kind of keeps going into our end stone there. We got tough and dripstone. We've got our diorite and andesite. We got our granite, our brick, and all of our terracottas are stored over in here. Look how much orange terracotta I have. It's so much. I don't know what to do with all of it, but it's everywhere. And that connects us, if we follow out this way of the quarry, back almost to our starter base, which I love. Starter base is that tower right up there, which we'll get to in a moment. But another close to spawn point here is I built out this really cool vineyard of here with all of our sweet berries. And then this is a sweet berry farm for a sweet berry vineyard. So we got a cool little outdoor tasting area, work area, all that stuff. And inside of here, we have a few foxes that are just working in a sweet berry farm that I really like. I think it's fun to have this and they produce so much that every single one of these barrels is full and constantly full. And so I had to add a little fire system and destroy the overflow because it's creating so much lag. But we do have an extra fox. So he's uh, snoozles up here just hanging out. Where did your friend go? Wasn't there a second fox? Oh, no. Oh, oh, hi. Eh. Hi, M. Yeah, you're not supposed to be on top of the pipes, but that's OK. It's got a little bit of steampunky element on this side, which I really like, and I want to keep doing more of that in this world. I just need to find excuses and reasons to do it. So we'll get there. Back here, we have the first two sniffers that we ever got in this world. I've kept them here, and they're just kind of hanging. Well, they're... Yeah, okay, yeah, there's still two. Oh, gosh. Good, 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 good. Oh, I was a little worried that one of you was missing. 
I don't know whatever could have happened to you and you just nice little pen that you can't get out of. But more importantly, up here we have the first castle that I've ever built inside this world. I built this on episode three. We have been way out of order on so many things here, but that's a okay with me as we've got this really cool castle. Don't let me forget. We got to look at that thing and that thing as we get out of here, but we'll explore these two and then go back. Leading up to the castle along the road here, when I started this world, a lot of my other friends were starting in Hardcore Worlds too, so I kind of kept track of those who had died in their Hardcore World, and I've just added uh, gravestones as they went. I didn't really carry along with that, but it's kind of funny to see. Uh, there's a balloon out that way that you'll see a red one that actually is Mythical Sausage. He was adding balloons for people who died in his... Well, he was doing his hardcore world, so I put a balloon out there when he died in his because uh, we the, were the reigning champ out of my friend group for hardcore over here. So, you know, we got to keep that up. But this castle here was built as a map room castle. Well, it was actually just built as a really cool castle to span over this valley as I really wanted a massive bridge here. And I thought it'd be really cool. And uh, it definitely is. And I love it so very much. Uh, so it leads you to that little small place there. And then we have a small castle right over here. And now the castle has a purpose of being the map room. Recently expanded and reworked on it. Originally, it was just on the walls in here. Of every few episodes, I was building out a new map. So you can kind of see as we're walking through here as all of the different ones are developed. So we started episode three right before I built the castle is when I took the first map. So you can see my starter base and starter mine right over in there in my old tree chopping area. That start of the city was a village. And then we came up here on episode 12. You can see Lake Town starting, a lot of those beginning elements and all that cool stuff. The castle's on there. Episode 15 was a pretty big change of we built the world tree. So the, well, first rendition of it. So I wanted to add that in there. And you can see the raid farm they're originally being up there, the gas farm output right in there. And then we get to 25, which adds a bunch more stuff of the start of the city and just a lot of different elements throughout coming together, which is so fun to see it all. Leading us into this main chamber here that I love so very much that I recently built, uh, I wanted to get a bunch of fish tanks. So we have fish tanks on the corners because I didn't really know what to include there. Still working on the floor. Uh, and then up above, I was like, what if we had big fish? So uh, we manually moved guardians. I think five of them, there should be five, four or five that are now inside a tank on the ceiling. I want to do an elder guardian, but I want to keep expanding this so uh, we can't get mining fatigue in here. Otherwise, I'd never be able to work again. Episode 32, we added this map here that started the lower city section and then a lot more stuff in the custom terrain over there began. Then we get episode 37. And then after that, I got a little smarter about when I was doing the episodes. But you can see I've been slowly expanding the map and making it larger and adding extra ones. And then this here, I believe, is the final expansion that I made. This is the max size I'm going to keep this map at because it takes me almost an hour and a half to update it every single time if I want to get every single one of them and get all the different spaces. So, uh, yeah, this is the mass max size, and we'll create different maps elsewhere in the world if we want those. But you can see these over in here, and the most recent one that I literally just took before recording this here is at episode 60, which is so very fun to see everything coming together. You can see the massive expansion of the World Tree Canopy with all of the new leaves compared to the earlier one, and the big city starting to come together. We're almost at the point where the two halves are meeting, which is so fun. And uh, the castle and all that now appears on the map as we stretched out the flower village, which we'll get to soon. And oh my gosh, we've been here for an hour. <laughs> right, let's go out the secret exit right over to here to where we can get back to my starter base. And this guy right over here along this pathway leads us past a little lumber chopping area where a bunch of trees were chopped down. And that leads us into the lumber room storage, which I mentioned probably like 40, 50 minutes ago. But here you can see it working. It was a full auto system up above, but the way the redstone works on the outside of the building, I had to make a one wide elevator to get it all up there. And it was interfering with the redstone of this. So unfortunately it doesn't work. So I just manually put all the logs in here now, but we've got a good amount of stuff. And then all of the crafted versions of it all come over into here. And then to expand for bamboo and cherry, they had to get their own little slots right over in there, unfortunately. But look at that view with everything loaded in as we walk out of here. That is a special, special view to me. I love this so much. There's a mythical sausages balloon from when he died. But coming back here, I should somewhere, you know, I'm just going to get a new under chest. I don't know what happened to mine. And uh, thankfully, I have a lot of stuff in this world. So we can just craft a new one right there. And there we go. I got my travel under chest. And uh... okay, 
to link the last few things together, we've got this building here, which uh, you might be able to guess by the outside is a sugarcane farm. I recently did decorate it on a live stream. So yeah, I know it was here for like 5,800 days, probably now nah, probably 6,100 uh, without any decoration and just these rough farms. But now they're decorated and they work pretty well. I come and clear them out quite often for rockets and I do need to come back soon. Uh, so I'll have to clear out even more of the space in here. The other one though this building right here you can see this little bit of water coming out the side i don't use this system too much anymore because i have so many shulker boxes but early game it was great because this is my mind so everything i mind if i put in a water elevator system which i can show you so we can take this mine cart down because mine carts and mines are cool instead of just a random staircase but it stops at every single optimal level to mine certain types of ore so i believe this is the level for coal unless you're in a mountain biome or it's copper but every single level has one of these systems here and a water drop that goes all the way down to deep slate or uh into bedrock actually below the deep slate so if you put something in here it'll send it all the way to the top into those chests now you can take this click forward and then you can send yourself down again you do have to hold w to keep moving after the rail gets powered underneath you but you can also use powered rails as kind of a brake system if they're not powered so you can send this all the way down here to the bottom of the world and well diamond mining level so this is where I pretty much mine for all of my deep slate and diamonds as we go if we walk through there there's a massive clearing because there is a beacon going up the world tree and that actually is haste too so I've been mostly doing it over there to help save a little bit more time but uh it's been pretty fun to be able to see all this stuff together and we can head on out of here now as we don't need to explore the mines too much but I've been trying to keep all of my mining in one region for the most part if i am doing anything so that i can kind of see everywhere that i've cleared out as we're going just because i think it's kind of cool there are a few farms in this world like spider farms and everything that i'm purposely not really stopping at as we don't need to check out all those things as i think you've probably seen a spider farm before so instead i can spend the time showing you cool builds and stuff that i've made of how we're making this world unique compared to other ones so i'm focusing on that a little bit more here uh let's get the bow out and put the chest piece on and head back home and take a little snoozle if you told me touring around this world was going to take more than 10 minecraft days i was gonna say you're crazy that's obviously never gonna happen but we can head down here finally into the nether no nope, we missed other things we missed we missed a lot we actually skipped a lot of stuff we're going back this way that is the way to the nether though first off we're gonna go over here and then we can get to the nether in a moment from a different entrance so the big old town that I made, you know, that custom birch forest I was talking about, all that stuff. Yeah, we never really walked through it. So here you go. You can see what the custom birch forest looks like as we're going through this whole place. It's got a cool road leading through it. We got a little naturalist hut who some of you might be living out here in the middle of the forest. And then we've got a little hunter's cabin here with some good doggos hanging out in front of it. All that cool stuff. Mostly it's just ways to have extra additions into it. But we're coming back towards the gas farm monument, which is hidden inside the big old rock over there that people say looks like a capybara or a whale from when you're looking at that way at it. Um, yeah, so that's there. And then we have this little farmland region. So I wanted to add another little house and structure in here to mark it. And then we finish the forest off here, connecting into the rest of it again as that natural sight line division that I mentioned a while ago. This is one that I want to keep expanding on a lot coming here in the near future as it's going to kind of tie into the custom train that we're working on all the way over there. But here we had a village nestled into a flower forest, hence all of the giant fields of tulips around us. Every single one of those houses over there is actually a fully automatic tulip farm uh, for all of the different colors of tulips, which is very, very fun. And then I decided to build the custom village to go along with it just to have some extra details inside here i wanted to get a shepherd just hanging out and uh all of the villagers decided to come over and uh we have just some sheep hanging out in here too which is pretty fun i just kind of let them all do their own thing at this point inside of this little hole inside the mountain i do have that nether tree farm that i talked about and we just got a little storage hidden behind those blocks that i can hide in there i tried to not afk but for that i'll let i'll let myself afk for like 15 20 minutes and get all the materials and then keep on moving from there over this way, I'd mentioned that I have a giant auto sheep farm for a single type, and we've got that right in here, which I believe is hooked up to light gray wool currently. It's only running if I'm in the area, which is going to be great because we're going to use a lot of light gray wool on this mountain range itself. And then the most important feature right over here is the horse racetrack. 
I wanted to experiment with getting the fastest possible horse in Minecraft. So we hooked up some villagers right over there with golden carrot trades. And then these are quite literally the fastest possible horses you can get in this game. Some of them have absolutely insane jumping capabilities too. But yeah, every single one in there is fully maxed out. Uh, all of the rejects are right over here. So we've got this whole racetrack system built out here where you can start here, you can turn a light on and run all the way down to the end and it gives you a timer for how well that you did. So that should turn it off and then it just kind of goes back here. It's not the most accurate thing in the game as uh, there's a lot better ways to do it. So uh, you can see that was a 16 dirt horse out of a full stack of dirt to be able to get down there. So you can kind of variate the speeds between them there. And then we got a whole little jumping system here where this guy can go four blocks pretty easily. And then you can use snow layers to get yourself down a little bit further. And he's like a 4.6. I don't think he can do the five. Yeah, not quite. So he's almost maxed out. That back one there with the snow layers on it is their max possible jump height. And I still have yet to find one of those. Eventually, we're going to go on the quest to find the maxed out mule which involves getting a max rank donkey with all of these and then breeding that with a horse and then getting the max of all of that coming in there together, which I think is going to be a really cool challenge. That one is new. I bred. I haven't tamed it yet. I was going to try and do that real quick, but I'm not going to waste the time. So yeah, we've got this whole system here. The horse racetrack is actually a fully completed racetrack as well that you can run and time yourself on that I modeled after a Formula One racetrack. I can't remember which one but it goes all the way down there, loops around that way, goes around the mountain and comes back here and blah, blah, blah. And I, of course, got a timing system hooked up for it that is probably broken because pillagers seem to walk across it all the time. So I've got three stacks in 47 and three stacks in 46 is my best times. So if you get the world download, you can do it. You just have to start behind this line. And if those lights on there are off, that will mean the timer is good to go. But if you do this, you will see that is now turned on, meaning that the timer is running. And then if you come back over here and click it again, you will see fireworks going to celebrate that you completed it. Woo, fireworks. And that'll add some dirt in here for a time. So you can get your times that way and be super fun. I really love this project. I want to remodel the racetrack a little bit as we're doing the custom train over here. I want to bring this train up a little bit more. So it's going to be really, really fun to work that out and kind of do a version two of it. And I think that's when we'll go for that max rank mule as well, just because it could be totally chaotic and fun to try. But over here, coming back into the flower forest village, we've got this, which is meant to be very, very colorful. Big old water mill, lots of towers, lots of cool stuff throughout here fully functional village that was full of villagers. I don't know what happened to all of them. A lot of them are still in here hanging out, but they've got some decorated interiors, mostly just workstations and beds for them to have so they can live in the area and they can all have their own little houses of every single villager profession has a home in here, which is really cool. And I try to not add too much like religion into this world that is baked into any real world religions at all so instead i have this place where they're worship worshiping or trying to grow a sapling of the world tree so it's a little acacia sapling there with the azalea on top to mimic our world tree which uh we can see the top of right over there uh where you can see the acacia wood and then the azalea leaves so we have that kind of matched here that they just are trying to give all of the light from this and that's pretty much as close to any religious things as we're ever going to have in this world. I think it's kind of a fun little addition and that's that's pretty much where I stop it. But we can head out back to the village this way. There's just a lot of unfinished interior spaces, but the build itself looks pretty cool from the outside. And this is mostly just a backdrop here if I wanted the custom village. And uh, we did lose one villager during the process. Thankfully, we didn't have to make more graves. But here we have all of our tulip fields and the farms. And they're all inside these places so we can click and turn them on and this one produces uh, i have to start the other side very loudly produces our red tulips so you can see all those spawning in here tulips will always spawn in the same place as previously so if you spawn one there like that block will always spawn a red tulip so you can know that if you build a farm around it that's always going to be a red one so I've marked that. You can see the red terracotta on here. We have the orange terracotta. We have the pink terracotta, which I believe in this one is, yeah, our pink tulips. And then for our white tulips, I always love this. We have our light gray because white tulips give light gray. White, white, light gray. White, light gray. White, light gray. Yeah, I know. It's it's a weird one. 
Uh, this one also produces pink tulips because I couldn't get it all just white tulips in a spawn region. So we've got a little bit of both in there. I think the orange one also has a little red in it or something like that. But for now, this pathway just goes right back there and ends. Uh, and what we can do instead, where I was going to take us in the nether, we can actually go along the road that brings us there. We have about 1,500 blocks to travel that will take us out back this way along these other tulip fields to a cool little custom bridge that I built a while back that we can kind of just keep zooming beyond where I built a giant road to start a new adventure in this world. Along the process, right over here, we actually found a trail ruin. Literally, I put the road going right next to it and then realized that there's a trail ruin right here. So that was kind of a fun one to fix up and figure out as we're going, but that kind of takes us all the way up here to where I have a little farming hamlet, just a random wheat field. We got a little grain silo, a house and a sheep stable right next to it. Fun little decorations in here, but nothing super important. Mostly just set dressing to where we lead into this village that our road kind of turns around this way and comes up here. Eventually we'll do something with it. But for now, it hasn't been high priority. It's like an oak village right on the edge of Savannah. So it'd be kind of fun to mess with. The road continues along this way through a very ancient ruined castle, completely crumbled and the remnants of a wall that used to span this area. But you can go through there, which leads us out to the coast and another village right along here that I think is so cool. So we got the road continuing along that. And I did connect it all the way down here to reach the lowest level because pre because previously the villagers couldn't do it. But then right out here, I've actually got a custom boat because I wanted to have stuff as you're traveling along the road to be able to see interesting things as you go. So when you're going along there, you couldn't really see anything. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to come out here and build a boat. Why? Because I wanted a boat. And I also would like to skip the night that's about to be here because we're going into more villager territory and I don't want them to die. But yeah, it has a full little interior. It's got an ender chest and a bed just in case I need anything or a crafting table and uh it's got this beautiful view out over everything where we're going to be going to New Papyrus in a moment right over there. Morning is here and we are off to one of my favorite places in this entire Minecraft world where we have a jungle, bamboo forest and everything. The road from the village continues along here, connecting into a mesa and it's created this amazing valley that I did come back through here and I changed all of the red sand that I talked about that mass storage for earlier into white sand for the front of the Mesa because I think it looks beautiful to create this lush river environment that I think is so fun. So all of these rivers we built out and just made it super, super lush here, traded all of our red sand for this regular sand and has this beautiful face of a Mesa wall with a jungle on top leading over here into the actual Mesa and all that beautiful stuff where uh, we you can see that I've carved the river out here that we got to come through and fix up a little bit more. But this whole environment has been so fun to create to where the Mesa does continue itself along that way. But the desert itself goes there, too. So we just got to push it back that way eventually when we continue working out here and what I built for episode 60. So if you just finished episode 60, this is literally what I was working on here. It is a very, very cool build that houses a very stupid and simple farm. But I wanted to go with like a lush, like hanging gardens feel here. So a massive fountain, this obelisk monument thing, similar to where we have the gas farm storage, is just resting here. Super ancient, super weathered, worn down, so much texturing into it from the winds and the sands of the desert. And somehow it is just pouring out this super clean, pure water consistently forever. And it is just feeding so much life in this area. So we have all of that. And this little hopper here, you'll see, I hooked up a farm on the inside that we'll go into in just a moment. Unfortunately, the farm is out of bone meal, so it doesn't work right now. Uh, I ran it for too long and it ran out and I need to go restock it, but I just haven't bothered with that yet. So it's got multiple layers, I think four layers of water coming all the way down here. Then this goes all the way out to there. The other side originally would have went out to feed into that far river, but I decided to just bring the sand down and uh, save myself some time and effort. And then also the statues here broke and kind of blocked it. So nobody really maintains this. It's just this ancient thing that nobody knows who built it. So that gives life to this desert and creates the whole lush environment around us for all the palm trees and everything to thrive. And uh, 
it's just uh it it needs some upkeep so we stopped that and it doesn't have any water coming out this side but we've got this interior space that is again full of so much green and if you were to flick this lever things would be popping out of here and going up that way what things you might be asking well of course the most important thing to build this entire structure for seeds we have so many seeds and it's it's fun i don't know i wanted to do something absurd for a minecraft item that's able to be gathered up so easily uh so yeah did i build this entire giant structure to add a little bit more lore and history into the world and then also as a seed farm yeah i did i i I did that, but I love it. It's fun. So although the seeds come up here, I add this little glass to prevent them from flying too far. So they go that way, they fall down here, and then they all perfectly land right there in that hopper to be collected. And then they all get picked up and sent out into the place. But if we come back over here to the start of the desert region, that is my original tall grass farm. So I need to get rid of it and actually rebuild one inside of there. I want to make a place because if you didn't know in a mesa, if you bone meal grass, you only get tall grass. You don't get flowers. So if you're ever trying to farm seeds or tall grass, the best place to do it is a mesa biome, which is the reason why that is built there. But as our entry point into the desert, we have this where I can trade out from my horse and I can get myself a camel and we can use that to venture further in to uh, I have this little place here also as a way to get here where we have another portal. We've got some storage. We've got a bed if we need it and just, yeah, excess, excess junk still in there that if I ever need it. But that takes us out here where we have a lot of torch flowers. We got cactuses. We got pitcher pods. Everything along the river is super lush, very, very full of life. So overgrown, just a lot of stuff happening. And I think it's so cool. And then as soon as you get off of that, the desert just isn't able to support that much life. So unless the people who are living out here and the lands of new papyrus are irrigating and bringing water off, they're not really able to do too much. So a lot of the farming of the region is kept very, very close to the river. We've got this really cool pathway here that I worked in a lot of the birch and the inside texture of a mushroom, the mushroom block. So that's actually red mushroom block that we're using here. And I think it's really, really fun, but that led to creating a lot of really cool farming environments. So we've got the first bridge over here to get you out of the sun as you're walking throughout. And then here, this was actually a normal Minecraft village in the desert that I kind of repurposed a lot of the villagers. And we have an auto carrot farm right there for fun. Back there, we've got an auto potato farm. We've got pumpkins and melons. We've got sweet berries. We've got wheat. We've got more sweet berries here. We got a little boat right there that you can use to slide up and down the desert very easily because I'm saying the winds because the ocean, that massive ocean I've talked about, is right out here. It connects all the way over here from spawn all the way back over here through the waterways. So a lot of winds are coming off of that space into here. And I wanted to use a small boat design that they have. So this mass would be able to drop down and then they can dip underneath those bridges as they need to, pop it back up and use the winds to be able to sail around super quickly. Just a little bit more story element and having some more fun stuff than just, I don't know, rowboat to get up and down. So we've got all this back in here. We've got a lot of buildings for our villagers to live in who've relocated from that original village into the space that I built for them to where we do have all of the storage for our carrot farms and our potato farms coming into the base of this windmill. Very much inspired by the windmills of like the Persian civilization in Age of Empires 2. You can come back in here and I don't know, it's just a fun little interior space. And then you can drop down here to where we have the chest coming in, which has all of our potatoes in there and all of the carrots over in there. That way, if I ever need to refill our villager population up, I can just jump down there and grab some of the stuff and then they can take it away from there because there's plenty of beds. But I thought it was really cool to use these as like hanging banners of sorts. And we've got right over here, just another one of them, which I thought was pretty cool, venturing off into that little house for the potato farm. And I love how that looks. It's so fun being able to see it out here. This, though, is a camel sanctuary that unfortunately murders every single camel that I put inside of it. Because for some reason, Mojang made it so that camels to breed need cactus. I said, cool, let's build them a sanctuary full of cactus that looks so cool that the camels will love. Camels also die to cactus. And camels have this weird thing in their AI, so now they just live in here, where um, if they just walk over here and sit down, they don't care if they're taking damage. They're not going to get up. 
they're lazy, just like me. And they're just like, yeah, I'm just going to sit here. I'm just going to sit here and suffer for a while. Just do that. And eventually they do that enough and they die. So now our camel sanctuary camels all live in here for their own safekeeping before they go extinct. And over here instead, this has turned into one of the obviously most important farms. This region is really just full of super important farms of the seed farm. Then down here, we have the even more important farm of the pickle farm. So if you ever need seed pickles, this farm makes like 90,000 pickles an hour. You're never going to need more sea pickles than you'll get out of this farm. I don't think I could ever use them all that fast, but we have the pickle farm. If we ever need pickles, we've got the pickle farm. Which is all hidden down here in this little oasis section randomly in the desert that has some water and palm trees and all that life stuff going along with it since the water's there. And I wanted to make succulents that are just a little different. So we have a bunch of the amethyst stuff that you can get, like not the full grown amethyst clusters. So we have the little baby ones. We got our pickles. We are dead bushes. We are torch flowers. We are cactus. And it's so highly detailed and decorated and the camels can't survive in it. I'm so sad. I wanted them to hang out down there so badly, but they they die before they make it there. So uh, they they stay up in their house now. Following our river, we've got a road going that way that unfortunately stops right there because I haven't continued the project yet. And then we've got another road that goes along here that leads us into the harbor of New Papyrus. If you've been following my channel for a long time, you might know my building with flip series where I had a original desert village that I started my five year survival world called Papyrus because I wanted to live in a desert and do something fun and unique. So this is kind of my re envision of I've learned a lot of things over the last eight years of being a Minecraft builder on YouTube that uh, this is my remade version of my desert city civilization. This is a little village on the outskirts, so it's not the city. But I really love how this has turned out with all the different colors and everything in here. So there's villagers living in it. Again, more villagers got relocated over here. We've got some camels hanging out. We got a little water thing in here that I saw in Diablo 4 in one of the cities. And I loved it so much that so I built a really similar version of it here. So you can kind of just like walk in, take a little bath, walk out the far side, and it's super cool. But yeah, all of the villagers in here seem to uh, really love hanging out right there. They are always hanging out here because they can't, for some reason, get out of the water. So we've got a lot of trade boats coming in as this is very much a harbor coastal city. And they've got more of their local fishing boats here so they can go out as they need. This was the storage room I was using while working in the area. I've kind of cleared out a lot of it. I need to come back and keep working on here. I'm very excited to do it. I'm mostly just also very excited about other projects. But up here in the top, I need to move this and relocate it to somewhere we can keep expanding it. But we have the map of the region. So you can see everything that we have over here where we came in. We have along that way. We've got our other city that we built, the little village over there. I think the edge of the new build that I made right up there will actually... Can I get that? Yeah, let's see if we can go up these. Let's see if we can go update these. I'm not sure. I actually really don't know if this is going to reach or not. I think it will because I think that ravine in there i think i covered that so we might be able to get just the edge or the whole thing that i made all the way updated on here please no oh it's just barely out of it wait no why aren't you oh is it no this is locked i'm being dumb i'm flying over the top of it well i have to make a copy of these and then that whole thing will be on there my light was almost broken so we're prepping another one ready to go <laughs> Oh, we've been touring for a while, but over here, I want to make sure I'm checking on everything. So I hope y'all are enjoying this, but we got a little cool row house building here. We've got some more builds right out over here. Just little structures and things. This is like a tapestry place or sail maker. I can't remember which one of the two. Uh, everything that you can need in the village is all here, ready to go. And we've got this cool little highly detailed market along the back for like a bunch of fishmongers to sell their food that they have to everybody else. And just all really fun additions throughout. I love this place. I can't wait to come back here and detail some more, but it's definitely a project for the future. Over here, though, we've got this big old obelisk entry point into the region, which I think is so fun. And once we have a city on it, oh, it's going to look so good being able to walk into here and see all that stuff or coming up on a boat and seeing this grand place. Ah, it's going to be awesome. But we have this big old ship right over here, which is the first boat that I've ever made myself that I'm just really, really happy with at this scale. I make a lot of smaller boats, but this terrifying. I was so scared making this. I just stunned 
it took me like two days to plan and build that thing before I even started getting it here into the world. And that was like another day to build it. So that thing took a long time, but I'm very, very happy with how it turned out. And it was a good challenge. So I, I want to keep doing more of that. Like I want to throw another boat like right back in here. And then eventually this is all going to go into a massive city where that village is going to be transformed into the desert city. I just got to lift some terrain up a little bit. But as you can see right out there, that is a coral reef, which means tropical fish spawn. And I decided to do something completely stupid while building this region that along with building all of it, I told myself I'm going to get a blue axolotl. Why? Because I'd never done it before. So inside of here, we now have blue axolotls. One of these is named Booger. Where's Booger? There's Booger. Hi, Booger. How you doing? That's the first blue axolotl that I ever got inside this world. So he hangs out here with his little family and it's so great. And we now have that. That took, uh, apparently I got very lucky because it only took me like uh, 200 axolotl breeding sessions to get it. Uh, we're not going to talk about what happened to all those hundreds of axolotls that we no longer have. But yeah, so we got that. That was super amazing. Absolutely love it. It was so, so fun. No, it was terrible. I never recommend anybody do that unless you really want the flex that you have with blue axolotl. It's so time consuming and not fun at all. And if you ever right click with your bucket of tropical fish, and you don't click on axolotl in the tank of 100 axolotls, your tropical fish they're going to use to breed them, dead. Instantly dead. And does that work to breed them? No. They have to be alive. You have to feed them to their when they're alive and not when they're dead. And why that works and they can't just use a dead tropical fish? I don't know. But it's so annoying and I lost so many and it was so frustrating. And I think it took me like 30 hours of axolotl breeding to get that thing. And apparently I was lucky. Apparently, I need to get that off my chest, too. Uh, but yeah, this is New Papyrus. Super fun. Absolutely love it. And where we can go from here is one more trip in the overworld before we hit the nether, because we are almost done with our overworld dimension builds. If we head out this way, we've got two things. One, a raid farm. It's the ENX04 raid farm. We don't need to stop at that. Y'all have seen it. It's just out here on the ocean, so that works very well. And two, we've got ourselves a guardian farm. Oh, look at that desert region fading off into the fog. Oh, it looks so good. But somewhere out here where these chunks are going to be loading in, we have the Guardian Temple that I completely cleared out the entire region, dug it all down, and decided to build this. A little bit of a, like a version of Atlantis, kind of inspired by the Nighthold in World of Warcraft, which I think is just a really cool architecture style. So this is a little elven, a little Atlantean, and I do want to continue expanding it off this way to another attached structure and do like city stuff out here eventually. But for now, we have this big old ring. All of that water is down low enough that it doesn't spawn axol not axolotls. Hopefully it doesn't spawn those, but it doesn't spawn guardians. And uh, in we can see another portal right up there, AFK points up at that top room. And then right in here is the tank where all of our guardians spawn and they kind of fall to their death. There's a lot of better versions of this that I could be building, but we've got this cool entry point right now. Takes you all the way down here and you can collect all of your guardian farm goodies as you need. This build was super fun to do. I had the idea a long, long time ago, and I'm very thankful that I went through the pain to do it back then because there's no way I would want to do it now. Yeah, these are live coral roofs. There's water inside that. I know. Um, but I dug the perimeter that we needed was actually probably at about like right there. And for some reason, when I was doing all of it, I was like, let's like double the perimeter size. So I have more space to work with and more space to build. And I am so happy that I did it because I was able to make this really, really cool build and have all this space out here. Just this grand presence in the middle of the ocean, which I love. We've still got a lot of work to do. We have it fully sealed down to the bottom there with the glass and everything. Cause I put that in, in stage one when I built the farm, but then when I actually wanted to transform it and turn it into this thing here, I added the extra details and we're going to keep expanding this going out further. Eventually it's kind of one of those future projects that I just love. So I can sit up here. This is the AFK point for the guardian farm gets all that stuff, collect it all. And then we can finally, somewhere off in that direction is that raid farm I talked about. That was where I originally was breeding axolotls. Never worked. Uh, but we can go right back over here to the nether portal that's just built into the structure itself. I utilize the top of the nether for safety and for convenience. So we've got a lot of stuff built up up here that you'll see a lot of the different spaces as we're kind of walking around. 
right there with the warped slabs on top of it. That is the new papyrus portal. Right over there is a drown farm that we can go check out. I got a random honey farm because bees never sleep in the nether. We've got a crazy gold farm right over there for all the nuggets that we need. All that gold goes into our bartering farm that's right there. The gas farm that I mentioned so many times is right there. And all of those portals go through into that monument in the overworld near spawn. Down that way is a magma cube farm. Right next to the magma cube farm, we have a frog light farm loading in. And then right over there, we have a hogland farm. And not even to mention this giant thing here on the roof of the nether that is my nether hub. I think it is so, so cool to build on top of the roof and make something just fun. The only problem is, is that everything has to be spawn proof. Otherwise you get gas and we don't want gas anywhere other than there. So all of this, everything in here is spawn proofed and completely slabbed not even light levels, not even relying on that of just everything is a slab, a wall or a stair at their or a button at their top level or even crystals apparently are spawn proof. So we have that. But I think the most impressive part about this build is that I cleared all and I mean all of this to be able to fly. Yep, we're still good there to be able to fly in and out. I cleared all of the bedrock to be able to have this giant portal to access the inside of the nether and what I have out here is a giant perimeter for a wither skeleton farm which was so nuts to be able to do this it took over 200 hours to clear the space build the farm get rid of all of the lava all so that we could get have wither skeletons spawning right here and they can come down here and we can just get our unlimited numbers of skulls and everything and I need a little experience but yeah Everything is cleared. We've got an old blaze farm right over there of where this fortress used to connect. This thing connected all the way over there and back to there. Absolutely massive fortress. I think it was a double one, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, it connects everywhere. So we cleared it all down. I started these obsidian walls. I want to finish them going around. I just need to clear out a little bit more stuff. And, you know, I, I actually have the obsidian and crying obsidian to do it. So I just need to come back and actually put the time in. Okay, wings are almost repaired. That's probably good enough. We actually have an original little bartering farm hidden like right back in there somewhere. You'll probably see some stained glass for it. Uh, Yeah, those guys right there. My original access point into the nether, I think was it was one of the portals right up in here. I think it might have been that one. I think that's where I started in the nether. But no, 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 no. I started like right over here. I, I don't know. Somewhere around here is where we started in the nether. And we, of course, got a crimson forest and it was very deadly. And uh, just for a little revenge of all the pain that they've caused me. Oh, no. Can you just let's just do the little fall. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's perfect. Thank you so very much. Um, but yeah, so I re relocated to the top. I would love to continue down here eventually. But for now, we're just focusing on building all the way up at the top to keep that stuff going. Right over here. I don't know where that portal goes. It's just kind of an extra one. That one goes to the end, which we'll go to in a moment. But first, let's check out the drown farm because it is pretty insane. I used a design that even the creator of the design said, yeah, it's probably not the most efficient, but it is a cool way of doing things and it's unique. So I said, you know what? That sounds great. We're going to do that. This is my drown farm here where all of this place is soul sand bubble columns at the bottom that bring them on the top onto a bunch of scaffolding which then there's water flowing on that that pushes them into the portals. That sums them through that little loopy thing in the nether that we were just looking at a moment ago. And if you stand up here in the daytime for just a minute or two, eventually they are all going to be up here and you can just collect so much experience and you just need to swipe at this armor stand sweeping strikes and it'll kill everything back there. So I had to link all the portals up to loop them back into here. And uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a lot. We'll just we'll just do a little cheeky free cam so you all can see it. But you see all of the drown coming up to the top here as they're just getting zoomed to the top because thankfully they can spawn in bubble columns. And then as they're on the top here, they try to run towards the turtle eggs, which will send them through the nether or they just run over here to these portals. And eventually through that, we'll send them through to the nether. Why are you there? You there? You, yeah, thanks, buddy. Thanks. Uh, so yeah, eventually they will just get pushed through here. You can see them holding their shells and all that stuff. And me at the top here, the rates get crazier and crazier the longer you're here. But you can just keep swiping away and constantly, you you can just constantly get experience and levels and all that. And this is really good for copper. It's really good for tridents and fishing rods, rod and flesh, copper all the way back here. And so I have two storage systems just to spread out the load a little bit because so much 
comes through here. Look at all these tridents. This is Java. That's insane to get that many. But yeah, now you can see them up here. They're already dying to entity cramming. So you just come in here, kill as much as you can. And uh, looting three helps a lot. I think there's a lot better farms for copper rates in itself. But I thought this was a really cool one to build. It was super, super fun to just do something unique that you don't really see everybody doing because everybody builds that little ENX04 copper farm in the nether or in the end, and I didn't want to do that. I want to do something a little bit more unique and unfortunately stupidly massive. So we ended with that. I've also now realized, oh, here's what it looks like on the inside, by the way. Isn't this fun? So all the drown come through that top portal. They just get pushed out there as more and more of them spawn and then they fall down there which then pushes them all in here because they see the turtle eggs and they're like "Ooh, i want those and then they go through that and then they appear in that killing chamber that i have which sends them up to the top and then they drop where you can kill them yeah it's pretty nuts i'm realizing now that we never checked out the villager trading hall so uh we'll go to that in a moment i've talked about it saying we're going to get to it so many times and i completely missed it in the last world tour so we'll get to that in a moment but for now Here's the stronghold to take us to the end, which is right through here. As uh, you probably guessed this by now, by everything else that I've done, this is the main end island. There's all of the side portals from killing all of the dragons 24 times. And uh, we're missing a little obsidian, obsidian. We're missing a little end stone. But back to that whole world tree vibe, I built another world tree. Another, not another. Though we're in the end right now where this is the middle platform that you can walk all the way up here which i think is so very fun we've got a little place to summon a wither and trap them in the bedrock if we need to and this is the portal to go back home which is so very cool to have all of this built i'd love to expand this more and attach it more into an environment instead of just be out here floating we've got ourselves a skulk farm right over there so we can mass produce skulk items we've got right over in here we've got an enderman farm that we can get for experience and then we've got all of the portals unlocked, so I'm never going to summon the dragon again because it would respawn all of the obsidian portals, pillars, and we don't want that. We've got about 30,000 end rods up there for the leaves of the tree to make it really glowing out here. And I one day want to come back here and add more. I've got so many plans in mind for this, but it's just been something that I've been obsessed with overworld builds and just haven't really made it back out here for. So if you want to see more of this, be sure to let me know down in the comments. Right, back at world spawn. Almost to two hours of recording. How my computer is still doing this, I don't know. I, I just, I'm a little worried it's going to get corrupted, but hopefully it doesn't and you actually see this video because if it gets corrupted, I am not re-recording it. Back over here though, we have that castle with the map room in it and everything like that, and we won't miss it this time. We're headed down into the villager trading cave. Yep, it's not a hall, it's a whole cave. Yeah, you probably guessed that by now. So we can start all the way over here to where we can get a really cool view of our dwarven village, which I love so very much. And we've got another warp farm back there. We've got, come here, come here, come here, come here. Aha, I got him. That didn't take 10 seconds. Uh, we've got a double geode over here so we can harvest these. And then this minecart takes you to a third and a fourth geode if you want to harvest those too. So if I ever need a bunch of tinted glass or amethyst crystals or amethyst blocks or whatever for whatever I'm making, I have those always fully ready to go and can harvest a ton of stuff as we're moving. So that's pretty quick to have and absolutely awesome. But now you can see the villagers coming in. That building right there is just for hiding that minecart track as it goes. Every single villager type has their own building for at least villagers that I built it out for. So down here we have all of our fishermen because I like to come here and buy campfires. One emerald for one campfire, I will buy that every day. And I use so many campfires to decorate, so I am buying that. I probably use these third most. I would say librarians are number one, stonemasons are in there, they're number two, and then fishermen are definitely number three. Also, to make it so I'm down here more often and have more reasons to come here than just the villagers, inside of this, we've got tucked back here way in the distance an insane super smelter to where you can drop a double chest in here and it all pops out there in under like three minutes. And then you can put all of the coal in here and it's just, it's nuts. This thing is so fast. There's 64 furnaces and it's definitely not an early game super smelter you need to have a weather skelly farm to get enough coal to be able to run it because it can't run off of sticks or bamboo or anything like that so uh it's definitely end game but it is amazing it's so good looping back around to this place here we have all of our clerics on the inside of this i need to get a bunch more of them because i've been using them to buy redstone as well as bottles of enchanting to repair my elytra on the go and things which has been nice but uh, we got to get more of that. Down in here, we actually have the villager breeder itself. 
which is turned off so i can if i ever run out i can put four beds down in there and then i can just grab these guys and we have a whole background network to where they come here they stop i lock in their job we send them on this way they learn how to be a good member of society from undead sausage right there and then they come up to here where we have holding cells once they've been undeadified I only cure them once because I don't see the point in doing it multiple times. I have unlimited emeralds, so it just makes it a little bit more convenient, but we can drop four in here. We can drop four over there. If I were to do this again, I would flip this. So the minecart track would be going around the outside and then the holding cells would lock them in the middle because as of right now, I have my golden apples and gold and everything in here and potions of weakness if I need them, but I can drop one potion right there. All four of them get off one potion. Uh, we're going to turn that there. And then all four of these can go off of another potion so I can cure them. We can use a lot less materials to do it. And then I have this whole crazy network here to where if I want to go to the lower level, we can go through that way. If I want to go to the upper level for those trading rooms, I can go that way. So I can flip these levers and move it so I can get the villagers to any single one of the trading rooms that I need as I want them there. Ow, thanks. Thanks, buddy. So this whole place is connected via a minecart track from behind. And in this room, that first of the lower level stopping areas is all of my stonemasons. I've added, uh, a lim I'm a little ashamed by this one, but I've added two extra rows of stonemasons back here. And I did find that I wanted to have this open originally, but he could talk with him and they would gossip. And, and then they'd be like, this whip guy is buying all of our stuff, increase your prices. And I was like, nah, we ain't about to have that. So I put a wall in between them so they can't talk. They can still stare at each other, but they can't talk through the wall. So that way they don't get cheaper prices at all because they can't talk to their friends anymore and they sell me stuff for as cheap as possible. So it's great. It's totally, totally humane in here. I mean, they all just sit down all day and wait for me to come along and give them some emeralds. Anyways, moving on right over to here, we have the next trading stall, which is all of our farmer villagers. They're just inside of here, all maxed out. I don't really use golden carrots, so I don't trade with them that often. I use pork chops personally. Hardcore Minecrafters will use that or you'll have the super flex of people who eat golden apples only, uh, but cook pork chops or using golden carrots, they're kind of the same. Golden carrots mean you eat food less often, but if you're ever taking damage, a pork chop will actually heal you faster than a golden carrot will. So I tend to do that because in a pickle, I, I'm, I'm ready to go. Uh, back here, we have all of our librarians. And then my first way of getting unlimited emeralds, we have all of our cartographers traded with a few times. So the glass pane trade is super cheap and everything here marked with a chiseled block they can actually trade glass so you buy all the glass come over here convert it into glass panes then you trade it with these guys and you actually net positive on your emeralds so this loop goes all the way around here so i have every enchanted book that i could use slash need in the world we've got them all here ready to go and you can see this little setup here for like if i want them to go farther up i can flip that or if i want them to go into here i can do that and then uh this continues all the way up further and further and then over here and it's yeah it's it's a whole it's a whole maze of minecart tracks and everything <laughs> it's worked out pretty well though i think it's fun i really like using minecarts i want to do it more often and all that stuff i think they're a fun way to travel in minecraft so i'm gonna try and do that but here at the tippity top we've got this little space which is full of all of our toolsmiths we got all of our armorers over here and uh yeah that's i don't have weaponsmiths anywhere yet but we can buy all of our diamond tools shovels and whatnot if i need them so when i was before the nether update got here i actually can show you part of the shulker i decided to make a ton of netherite tools so to make that a little bit easier and save on some diamonds i just bought all of them because it's one emerald for a diamond pickaxe why minecraft ever allowed that to happen i don't know but you know we're gonna abuse it because it's in the game and there we go we finally included the villager trading hall in a tour video it actually happened i remembered for once i actually remembered about this thing the only unfortunate part about it right now is well uh the way to get in and out of the villager trading hall uh there's no way to walk you uh either have to fly or you gotta take yourself up this water stream because this is what i did way back in the day before i had elytra so i did that to get out of here i have remade the entrance to make it a little bit larger than it originally was as i kept hitting my head on it and uh, I was getting yelled at a lot in the comments saying, hey, you should probably do this and not die going to trade with your villagers. And I was like, yep, you're probably right. That's a smart idea. So now it's slightly larger, but I definitely still hit my head uh, right about there every single time. There we have it. 6,424 days in this hardcore Minecraft world. We have done so much. There's so many more things to do. I can't believe it took almost two hours to get through touring 
this entire world. Thank you all so very much for the support on this one. I do hope you enjoyed today's tour video. Looking at everything, hopefully, I probably forgot some things. I hope I didn't. Uh, but thank you all so very much for the support on this. This series has absolutely changed my life, and I'm glad you all are enjoying it so much. And it's really just changed the course for the channel and everything. And I'm so excited to keep it moving forwards as for pretty much as no, not pretty much for as long as we possibly can. I'm gonna keep working in this world, but just a few stats here before we get out of here. So you can see them all. We've got over a million blocks mined with another right pickaxe. We got 728,000 with the shovel. The hoe is almost at 250, almost at 200 with the ax, almost at 200,000 dirt place, 150,000 sand, 135,000 stone place we've mined 427,000 stone place 70,000 azalea leaves and you can just do a quick little like look throughout here I'll, I'll do some I'll do a quick scroll all the way down we've used 46,000 rockets 50,000 coarse dirt which is nuts unfortunately 28,000 scaffolding from the drowned farm way we don't actually like using that block but it's it's okay it's got to do what it's got to do oh and that was for clearing lava in the nether super super good for that uh, mined 45,000 obsidian. Yeah, never want to do that again. 346,000 netherrack mined. All right, we're going to we're going to sort based off of that. There we go. Top blocks mined for all of them. 60,000 red sand mined to be able to clear out that mesa and turn it all into sand. So that's also 60,000 sand place to do that thing because I'd replace every single one of them. My goal is to get every single type of mob kill that is not through a farm killing things to over a thousand and we're slowly working up to that. We've got a lot of them trending towards like the 500s or so as we're getting up there and uh, it's pretty cool. It's It's been really fun to be able to work through all of these things and do all that stuff and then a quick little zoom on the stats right here. You can see everything that's coming here together. Uh, let's go. 8,000 crafting table interacts. There's that. We're almost at a million jumps, 839,000 jumps, 112,000 mob kills, 55.1 days of played time, which is nuts. I've held the crouch button for 8.59 days. I've opened 124,000 shulker boxes. I could just go through all of that and show it to y'all, but uh, we're at, we're officially at two hours of recording here, and I don't know how much more my RAM can do. So uh, thank you all so very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed today's tour episode and all that. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to FWIP2 if you haven't already. If you're finding this for the first time, check out my mage channel. It's just FWIP minus the TWO at the end. You'll find it. It's pretty easy to find. I'm kind of all over the internet for that one. But thank you all so very much for the support. As always, truly, thank you, thank you, thank you. And with that, my friends, I'll catch you all on the flip side.